Hi, I'm Mike and welcome back to the shop. Uh, this is episode number nine of the uh, Foam Core Scratch Build project. Uh, and so far we have just about finished this wing up. Uh, we've put our leading and trailing edge on uh, and, and all of that is shaped up very nicely. It looks, it looks really, really good. So we are ready to start cutting the lightning holes. I have gone ahead and uh, strapped this thing in with some blue tape to the cull. It doesn't matter which top or, or bottom. I, I always uh, use the, the bottom. I keep everything facing towards the top. On this step, I don't think that's absolutely critical. You could do this upside down or, or the other way around. It doesn't really matter. I just make sure I keep everything upside up all the way, all, uh, all the time anyway. So uh, what we're going to have to have to do this is, of course, a jig. Uh, this jig's a little bit different because it simply has a little uh, plate that I have screwed onto the back of it. It's not glued on uh, in case I need to change it, uh, change the plate out for another wing profile. So what that wing or what this plate does right here is uh, depending on the slope of the wing core here, um, we may need to space the back of this template up just a little bit. And that's what this plate right here does. Now we'll be using this router bit uh, or one just like it. There's several over there. Uh, this is a, a fairly inexpensive router bit. Uh, you can buy these and, and they're incredibly expensive or you can buy them pretty cheap. I think this one's 10 bucks or 11 bucks. Uh, probably Amazon. That's where I get a lot of that stuff. We don't need to have a, a super high grade router bit uh, for this case. Again, this is a flush trim. Uh, because all we're doing is cutting foam and a little bit of fiberglass and some balsa wood. So there's no need spending a boatload of money on a super nice um, router bit. Uh, you'd just be wasting your money. So get a cheap one as long as it's uh, at least a three inch cutter. Um, and that'll come in uh, to play here in just a little bit. Well, the reason we need to space the back of this, in this case it's the, the trailing edge, of this template up is because if it is uh, following the profile, the router bit will just nib the inside of this corner. So in other words, we want this uh, template to be sitting parallel with the table, which will be perpendicular to the router bit so that the knives on the, or the cutters on the router bit don't eat into the side of the template. They ride perfectly perpendicular to the template and ride all the way around. So that's all that is, is we have just simply spaced the back of it up. Uh, it's not that critical. You can just stand back and eyeball it uh, to you know, look at it to make sure that you're running parallel with the table, uh, which will, of course, will be perpendicular to the router bit. So enough on that. And we are uh, simply going to tape this uh, template down real good. Uh, to the top of our wing core, and uh, the tape holds it, holds it perfectly well. Uh, it won't come off at all. We'll, uh, just like we have the other parts, drill a hole through each one of our openings, uh, and then the router bit will come up through the bottom, and we'll work our way around fairly quickly. You'll, you'll see that it goes fast. Now, there are a couple of things that we want to uh, watch out for. Remember, we have some structures inside this wing that we don't want to hit with our, uh, our router bit. First of all, we have that wing tube, right? The wing ring tube socket, rather. And that wing tube socket, if we look, is get my glasses on. That wing tube socket, and I'm gonna measure from the that seam right there on the leading edge, that glue seam right there. If we measure, it is roughly, gosh, three inches from the back of that seam. Uh, so I'm gonna put me, a, actually it's about three and a quarter. I'm gonna put me a mark right there with a pencil three and a quarter and come down here, put another mark, three and a quarter, just a, a light little mark. And I'm just gonna run a piece of tape. And remember that is the, the leading edge of that uh, socket tube. So now my piece of blue tape is gonna represent that. And it looks like it did a pretty good job. I'm gonna put another one here just to uh, give myself probably a quarter of an inch. And that way I'll, I know I'm at least a quarter of an inch away. So the um, holes in the template here, I know need to be, oops, excuse me, need to be uh, this side 
towards the trailing edge side of that blue tape. So if I can see any of that blue tape through there, that means that I'm getting perilously close to my wing tube socket, so back away from it. And remember, I gave myself a quarter inch cushion. So as long as I don't see any blue tape, I'm good to go. Another uh, structure inside is remember our false rib is in there. That is the, uh, the little piece of light ply here that the wing tube socket is going through. And I thought I had one I could show you right there, but I don't. So that wing tube socket is going all the way through and this piece of light ply is embedded into the foam uh, way down inside there underneath the uh, fiberglass and the balsa sheeting. We don't want to hit that. And what we want to do is make sure that it lines up on one of these um, ribs, if you want to call them that, uh, foam sections inside the plane. We know that we put those from our previous um, stages, our previous episodes, we know that we put that about 14 inches, or we know we put it exactly 14 inches, just to make sure uh, what you can do is take you just a uh, hardwood stick or something, and then I, what I'm doing is, is running that down that hole where the edge of the, the corner of my little stick here uh, is riding down that foam, uh, and it will hang on that piece of wood. And there it is right there. So just to double check, and there we are, perfectly on our 14 inch line, exactly on the 14 inch line. So we did good. So we don't want to miss that. And I have marked the root end of uh, the template here. I've got notes all over it. Uh, and, and you will too by the time you get using it a few times. Uh, the root end is over here. That way I, I know to line my, uh, my little false rib up. And I have taken a piece of tape here or some tape and I have actually drawn out where that false rib is sitting so that I can't mess up. I have messed up before um, and, and had to go back and fix it. So I go to great lengths to make sure that I know exactly where that false rib is and I know exactly where that wing tube is. And that's about all we have to really pay attention to. And if we come back and miss our blue tape, that's going to put us... Um, about an inch and seven eighths, inch and a half or so. Let's get off that blue tape and get our line lined up here, right in the center of one of these, because we want that false rib to be resting right in the center of that foam area. And all we want to do now is make sure we have the same distance over here as we do over here. So I'll take the pencil and I'm lined up good there. I'm at an inch and a half. Put me a line there. Get an inch and a half off of this seam. And there, so that should do it. So triple check, no blue tape here. So we're not gonna hit the wing tube socket. Uh, we're lined up just right on our false rib to come right down the center of that. And we've got an inch leeway in there. So that's not that critical. And that looks good. So let's take us a couple of pieces of tape and just tack it down. Keep it from shifting on us. tack down pretty good. I'm going to double check one and a half. 
four and a half. That looks really nice. I'm gonna get some thicker tape. And what I have found through trial and error is that if you stick it, stick this tape on here like this and work your way down, it pulls it up tight in the corner. Don't let it stick down onto the balsa yet. It's just sliding across it. And you can kind of use your fingernail a little bit to push it into that corner and then set it down onto the balsa. And then shift it around, do the same thing from the other side. All right, that should hold it. I've never had one of these come loose, um, but we've got so much work in this wing core so far, uh, we wouldn't want anything to, to happen. So I, I, I'm sure I'm going overkill on, on taping this in. So you could probably use a lot less tape, but tape is, is cheap. It's certainly a lot cheaper by the time we have this time into this wing half. So let me uh, uh, chuck this router bit into the uh, the router and we'll move to the router table. All right, so getting a little bit ahead of myself there trying to get over to the router table. And all we need to do now is just uh, remember drill the holes uh, so that our router bit can come up through. This is just a 5 8 drill bit. It could be whatever size you want uh, as long as it's larger than the drill bit that we're using, which is a 1 half. So this just happens to be a, a 5 8 You could use anything bigger than half. And I will admit it is a, a, a little unnerving to <laughs> start drilling the holes through the top of uh, the wing core. Uh, so when you get nervous doing that, um, maybe it'll, it'll make you feel a little better now that it makes me nervous too. But I'm drilling right in the center of the, uh, the areas here. We're not having any tear out, and I've done many, many, many wings, and uh, I'm always nervous that the, the drill bit would pull uh, some of that fiberglass and, and cause tear out. It, it never has, knock on some wood. Uh, but just to be sure, I always drill right in the center or as close to the center as I can to give myself enough room in case it wants to chip out. <laughs> to the, the router table and the um, the dust collection will take care of all these at the, the router table okay so we've got our uh, our router bit chucked in and make sure we're clear I, I have double checked to make sure everything's tight and all of that business um, we'll test it you will notice that you'll see a good bit of run out on the top of um, the router bit, which means it's going to wobble just a little bit at the top. And that's normal for a uh, three inch uh, in, in longer cutter uh, bit. Uh, a, a bit half that size, which is generally what we deal with, you see almost no uh, run out or wobble. But by the time you, you stretch that out uh, over three inches, and this one happens to be you know, probably four and a half, almost five inches total length, uh, even the tiniest bit of run out on your collet, which is the, the part that holds it into the router itself, uh, even the tiniest bit, so say it was a, a, a I don't know how much, a, a hundred thousandths or whatever, by the time you stretch that out five inches, that's a whole lot more. So uh, my point there is, it's going to be almost impossible to get all of that run, run out out. Don't worry about it. Uh, it will follow um, the, the template fine and, and everything will work out fine. It's not gonna bother us at all. Now, I slow this down just a little bit uh, and I think I'm gonna run about 7,000 RPMs. That's a little bit fast. 
That sounds pretty good. We'll try that. Now I have set the bit, the bit height where it's running just about the center of, uh, of these ribs here. So let's see what we get. Actually, I'm going to bring that bit height up a bit. I'm a little bit low, so I'm going to bring that up. And I may have to extend the router bit out a little bit. Yeah, that should work. template off and see just how we did. And one of the reasons that I am uh, so careful to mark the root end uh, didn't talk about this just a little while ago. If and I have done this, so uh, caution ahead of time. Uh, and if you end up doing it, it's your fault because I told you. Uh, mark. Make sure that you mark the root end on your wing. That's what that piece of tape was right there that, that said root end on it. Make sure that your template is marked root end on both sides. 
because remember we're going to use both sides on the other wing we'll actually flip it over because remember it's, it's mirror image of this one so if you don't uh, make sure that you keep up with the root in what you will end up with and it's not the end of the world um, it'll just look odd is your pattern will be different so rather than your triangles being that way on one wing your triangles will be this way and on this wing the other direction again not the end of the world because um, uh, you will still miss the false rib in there now what is uh, a little more concerning though is you will run out of room to put your um, servo because we want this servo to sit in this area right here that's got a lot of room and obviously if it's turned over we don't have that we, we would have the equivalent of this and we would have to run the servo um, some other way uh, ultimately what I did in that case because it had moved this area to down here was I just uh, one wing had um, the servo a little bit further out than the other it didn't make any difference I just ran the arm here and ran the arm on this side uh, on this one so I was actually only about two or three inches difference which uh, our ailerons are so stiff uh, so rigid that it's not going to make any difference if we shift them uh, a little bit off of center. So that's not that big of a deal. But to avoid that pro that problem altogether, uh, or at least in the first place, um, make sure you mark your route in and keep up with it. Uh, you would think, or, or I would have thought that, uh, you know, having the hole over here would be enough for me, but uh, you get busy doing whatever you're doing. And... Uh, ultimately you lose track and, and you mess up. So uh, we've got all these fuzzies sticking up here and, and the question now is what to do with them. They go away real easy. Uh, that's just a function of our, our bit getting just a little bit dull. I've, I've cut a boatload of these things. Uh, but all you have to do is take sandpaper and remember this is the, uh, I think that's 120 grain. Uh, just take the sandpaper and gently run across. And I try to drag. Don't, don't be tempted to go down in there. You don't want to do that because you'll sand that edge too much. But uh, those fuzzies will sand right off the top very easily. And you just kind of comb them up like that if they're hanging down inside. Usually they are already hanging up. But if they're, if they're hanging down inside, just kind of comb them up a little bit and just drag right across the top. And after two or three passes, again, staying level. And make sure you don't have anything embedded on your sander. I see a couple of little things. Look like I had a drag mark across there, but maybe not. Uh, if you get something embedded on the, the sanding block here, it will make marks across your balsa. This right here um, is a flaw in the template. Um, I messed up one day while the router was running. I happened to bump it accidentally, and my bit height wasn't right, so it, it chewed into it. Well, I, I repaired it with balsa, but uh, apparently I have chewed through the balsa, and I need to repair it with a piece of MDF or put some Bondo in there or whatever I need to do. And even though I have marked it with my Sharpie to uh, remind myself it's there and to make sure that I just freehand right across it. Uh, I was in a hurry that time and wasn't paying attention. It's been uh, a couple of weeks since I've done some wings. And uh, I, I just followed the little divot and transferred that divot right into the wing. So something I've got to live with there. Again, not the end of the world, but it was something that was avoidable. Okay, so our wing came off the router looking very, very nicely. Uh, got all the little fuzzies taken off of it. The only imperfection that I see is the, the one that I put in it there. And that's generally the case. They, came out, they come out um, almost always in perfect condition. I, I have been shocked 
uh, what good a condition they come out in and how easy it is to do. And uh, before I cut the other wing, I'm gonna repair that so that I don't have that irritating little divot right there that I have to look at. So uh, the one of the things that you may ask is why I have more meat on this end than I do on this end. This, of course, being the root end, there's really no uh, forces down here uh, that are gonna cause any problems here. Uh, not that that wouldn't be strong enough because that, that's incredibly strong uh, material there. Uh, but like I have said many times, I have cartwheeled this plane down the runway uh, on numerous occasions. And my logic is just to give more meat out here so that when that plane is, is rolling, I don't uh, collapse a, a wing tip. Uh, knock on wood, I haven't, uh, haven't had any issues where I've broken a wing at all yet. Uh, one of the guys um, lost control of his plane and hit the uh, safety fence and, and put a big old divot in the end here uh, that, that literally comes back about a, a probably three quarters or, or an inch there. Um, and uh, if that were a, a traditional built up wing, uh, that probably would have destroyed that wing or at least would have necessitated some pretty significant repairs in there to get that leading edge uh, repaired back. Uh, and given the speed that it was running, it probably would have gone all the way through a built up wing. But because this foam is so incredibly strong, uh, all it did was put a big dent in there. Of course, it did destroy uh, all of that wood right there. But um, here we are a year or so later and he's still flying it because it doesn't matter. That's, uh, that's not structural. All of our um, integrity is coming from this wing tube socket area and the, uh, the overall uh, wing core itself. Uh, and then while we're talking about the foam here, and I'll put some steel photos in the, uh, the video here, overlay them, uh, you will be able to see the little fingers of epoxy that the vacuum pulls uh, down into the uh, voids between the styrofoam cells. And uh, here's, here's a better side there. You can see that there are probably millions, or I'm sure millions, of little fingers that are coming down, probably a half inch, maybe five eighths of an inch, just tiny little roots of epoxy. And we can see it because of the uh, red dye that I used. Uh, and that creates a shell, uh, basically hardens that top half inch or, or so, three eighths or half inch of the, the foam to where it is very, very difficult to crush. And this piece is an incredibly, incredibly strong. Um, and I have taken uh, some of these wings before and actually stood on them. Uh, as long as you set them flat, you can, you can walk right across the top of it without crushing it. Uh, that's how strong this is. And, and of course, it's, it's incredibly light. Um, so it's, it's a good build material. Now, a little bit more about our um, template here. Make, uh, again, make sure that you're, you're marking which end is which. And this template looks exactly or is made exactly like the previous templates that we've made for the uh, fuselage box size. There's nothing, uh, nothing different about it. Uh, it looks a little bit different because the ends have uh, 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 hardwood on them. Now that's in this case uh, is only because uh, I made a mistake and I tore the other one. I tore it up. Uh, uh, it, it, I dropped it and uh, it broke one of the, uh, the pieces here. Uh, so I just cut it off, uh, cut both ends of it off and put a hardwood strip across there. So otherwise it would look exactly like one of our other templates uh, that we've got hanging all over the place. As a matter of fact, this is for another plane. Uh, and you can see the, the shims here. I've just used a, uh, a piece of balsa strip, quarter by uh, quarter by quarter balsa strip. And uh, you can see where I've even modified this one. Uh, to give myself a little more room for the servos to sit. This happens to be the, the lightning holes for the flying wing, and I needed uh, more room for that servo to sit so that router comes down and rides around and doesn't chew out this part. Um, and over here, I made a modification so that I would have more room for the battery to sit embedded into uh, the, the center of the fuselage there. So, um, Again, that looks, and so you can tell, I didn't even take the uh, hardwood strips off of this one. I just left them on. And there's no need to take them off unless you just, uh, unless you want to. Most of the time I do because it looks better. 
uh, but uh, they can stay on there. It's not going to hurt anything. So uh, I think this is a good place to end this episode. And uh, in the next episode, we will uh, put the end caps. Um, this, uh, this end cap here, the root end cap, will be a light ply end cap. Of course, it will have the uh, blind nut inserted in it for the wing bolt. Uh, we'll do that in the next episode. We'll, we'll shave this off on the table saw. Uh, it only takes a, a couple minutes to do that. It's very easy to do. And we'll get this end cap put on. We will have to make a template. I don't have it right here with me to show you, but uh, uh, we'll make a template. I'll, uh, it'll be a little bit different template than this, but uh, essentially it's the profile here and it just locates our hole. So pretty straightforward. And this end cap on the tip end, we will shave that off on the table saw and uh, just put balsa over the end of that. So that's what we'll be doing in episode 10, um, which I'll get started on just as soon as I uh, finish the other wing half. So I will see you in episode 10.